everyone. We're talking about absolute and relative change this time. Um, and so the best way to explain what absolute and relative change are and, and why they're different and important is with this example here. So here's our example. We have this, we got this information from the Boston Globe. Um, they basically said that, hey, the tickets to get into Fenway Park, all the prices are gonna go up, sorry. So you can see that the last time they changed the prices was in 2003. These are the orange prices right here for ordinary seats and for premium seats. And then in 2008, they, they revealed, hey, I'm sorry, we're gonna increase the prices. So here it is in yellow and in yellow over here, uh, the markup. The question is what ticket price increased the most? Um, there is not necessarily one and only one way to answer this question. We're gonna look at two different ways to answer this question. Let's calculate the absolute increase. So basically just in dollar amounts, how much more money are you going to have to pay? So say that you were originally buying just the ordinary seats here. Um, you used to pay $42.26 for them. Now you're paying $52.16. So if I asked you, how much more are you going to pay now for these ordinary seats? How would you calculate that? I think you would take the new price of them, the $52.16, and you would subtract off the old price, $42.26, to come out with $9.90. So now you're paying almost 10 bucks more for these tickets. And so now let's say that you used to buy the premium tickets. So you used to pay $275 for one ticket and now you're spending $325 for one ticket. How much more money are you spending? Well, you do the same thing. You take your new price, $325, and you subtract off your old price, which is $275, and it comes out to 50 bucks. So now there's an argument to be made here. Hey, well, the, pe the people in ordinary seats don't even have to pay an extra 10 bucks, but the people in premium seats have to pay $50, so we're getting the, the short end of the stick here. Okay, fair. Um, I understand you making that argument, and that's what happens when you're only looking at an absolute increase. Now, let's put things into a different perspective, and let's look at relative increase. In other words, as a percentage, how much percent did this increase for these for these ordinary tickets? How much percent did I increase, right? And same thing with the premium seats. What percent increase was this? How much more as a percent, not as dollars, am I paying? So in order to calculate this for the ordinary tickets, we're gonna do the exact same calculation that we did here, the new price minus the old price, but then I'm gonna divide it by um, the old amount, the original amount, $42.26. Um, that's gonna come out to a decimal. That decimal is 0 0.2343. And so that's not in percent form. In order to get it into percent form, we're gonna multiply by 100. So as a percent, that's 23.43%. So what does that mean? That means that as a percentage, um, there was a percent increase of almost 25%. They increased by almost a quarter of the original price. That's a significant chunk. Um, and so we're gonna do the same thing with premium. We're gonna take the, uh, the first thing that we calculated here for the absolute increase, the new minus old, divided by the old price. And we're gonna get a decimal, and that decimal is 18, sorry, 0.1818. And then if you calculate that as a percentage, that's 18.18%. So now who paid more? Well, now it's a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah, these people are paying almost $10 more while these people are paying $50 more. But the people in ordinary seats had to increase the price that they were paying by almost 25%. Whereas the people in premium seats only they didn't even get a 20 percent increase they got an 18.18 percent .18 increase um and so really the amount that was charged more for everybody the amount that we decided hey we're going to increase this by to keep prices fair um it wasn't fairly increased to everybody in the same way so in a, if you only look at the absolute increase there's an argument to be said that hey well the people paying premium are getting the short end of the set because we're physically paying more money but really, if you look at it as a percentage, as a relative increase, really there's an argument to be made that the people who are paying ordinary seats the, for the ordinary tickets got the short end of the stick because they're paying more as a percentage. Take a second here, pause the video, and I want you to answer what you, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. What do you think, what do you think increased more? Which ticket? Um, the ordinary seats or the premium seats. Um, why? Give me a sentence. And then tell me which one do you think measures more fairly. Um, you could write whatever you want. Here's what I wrote. That the ordinary tickets um, seem to increase more because it hi had a higher percent uh, increase, right? Not as a dollar increase. Um, and why is a relative increase a more fair use here? Well, because it scales the difference of two different prices so that it's easy to compare. It's harder to compare when, you know, when you're talking about like, 
for example, if you're talking about um, how much taxes somebody has to pay if they're only making like $30,000 a year versus how much taxes somebody should pay if they're making a quarter million dollars a year, right? It's it's easier to, to see what should happen if we're just talking about percentages instead of dollar amount. It makes things more fair that way. Um, and so here is the list of the formulas. Um, these are just the formulas that we used. The absolute change, again, new represents new value and old represents old value. So the absolute change is the new price minus the old price. The relative change, we took that and we divided by old. You always divide by old and you always do new minus old. If you get a negative amount, that just means that your price decreased. If you get a positive amount, your price increased. What to do with that relative change? Well, we usually look at it as a percent, so we're going to multiply by 100%. This is what we just did in the last... Uh, in the last example. Um, so successive percentage changes. Percentages might not work the way that you expect them to work. Um, this is something that if you have ever worked in retail is something that you've, you've had customers tell you. I've had a lot of friends who work in customer service tell me about this and I just, I get it, I feel it, I'm sorry. Um, so let's talk about this so that the next time if this ever happens to you, you know what to say. So let's say for example, um, that you're shopping at Target and you're trying to buy a laptop. The laptop normally costs $1,000. Let's not worry about taxes here for a second. So the, the laptop costs $1,000. That's information that we need. So here's my entire rectangle that represents $1,000 and 100%. Target currently has a 50% off discount of all laptops. So you are going to get half off of this laptop. On top of that, um, you yourself also have a 50% off of any one item coupon, right? So you're gonna get a, you're gonna get half off of Gen. So the question me the question I'm gonna ask you is does that mean that your laptop should be a hundred percent off in other words if you have a 50% off coupon and then another 50% off coupon does that mean that your laptop now is free but the answer is no that does not mean that your laptop is hundred percent off you do not just get to add 50% plus 50% and that means you get it hundred percent off that's not how that works let's look at a picture here so here's my rectangle here's the price of your laptop original thousand dollars so the first coupon says that we're going to take half off. So here is a half and I'm just going to completely remove this half. You don't have to have it, right? This is, this represents 50%. This represents 50%. And so I'm getting rid of half of that by the, the discount that currently Target is having. Um, how much are you paying now if that was your only coupon? Well, that means you're paying half of $1,000. You're paying $500. Um, but then you come with your coupon and you say, hey, well, I have another 50% off. What's going to happen? Well, now you're going to come in, you're going to cut this in half again. You're not going to pay this. This is another, this is 50% off of this smaller amount. And then you're left with this 50%, this other half, right? You keep cutting the pie in half. Okay, so now what's half of $500? It's $250. And that's what you should pay for your laptop. It's not 100% off. So not only is it not 100% off, but you this means that you can't just take percentages and add them. That doesn't necessarily make sense. Most of the time, you can't just add the percents. It doesn't work that way. Um, we'll talk about when when it does make sense to talk about that. But let's let's look at what percentage off you actually got. You got 50% off, but then you got 50% off of the half that was there. You got half of half. Um, this little rectangle here represents 25%. So really you got all of this 50% off and then you got this 25, it's 25% off of the thousand dollars. So really your two 50% off coupons comes out to be 75% off. In other words, instead of having two coupons where it was 50% off and then 50% off, it would have been exactly the same thing if you would have just had one coupon that was 75% 70, off. It would have been the exact same thing not 100% off. When does it make sense to add these percentages? When in doubt, basically never, um, except if you're talking about percentage points. So say that you have a mortgage on a house or something and you're trying to figure out um, the interest rate on the mortgage of house or your loan or student loans or anything like that. Um, and let's say that the interest rates went from 2.25% to 2.75%. It makes sense to say these exact words, the interest rate has risen half of a percentage point. Notice the word point after percent. It didn't increase by half a percent. It's half a percent point. If you actually go and calculate how much that increases your like loan, say, say you had a loan that was 2.25% and then all of a sudden it increased to 2.75%, you can do the calculation and you find out that it's actually going to increase by 20, 22% of the original amount. That's huge, right? So it doesn't make sense to say it rose by half a percent. It makes sense to say it rose by half a percent point. 
make sure that you are saying things correctly. So then the next time that ever happens to you, you know exactly how to explain to customers that you know math and you can teach them how to do percentages. See you guys in the next one.